Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wellness 52 presentation for the month of April 2021, brought to you by the Airmen and Family Readiness Center. April is Financial Awareness Month, and this month's topic is financial literacy. Just for your information, if you stop by the Airmen and Family Readiness Center, we have some free uh, materials available to you regarding financial literacy and financial topics. So feel free to stop by during the UTA weekend if you haven't already done so. We also have a financial uh, awareness newsletter, which is available on the SharePoint page. Um, so getting into today's topic or this month's topic, uh, just to give you background information in regards to uh, the services we provide. Our mission uh, in, with respect to financial literacy and financial readiness is to provide financial education, information and counseling that equips service members to address their current personal financial situations, maximize their financial resources and effectively handle any financial challenges that may arise throughout their military life cycle. And here at the Family Readiness Center, specifically, we can help you with the following topics, creating a budget or a spending plan, understanding credit, managing debt, insurance, major purchases, savings and investing, retirement counseling, um, and so on. And so we offer one-on-one -on -one sessions and uh, counseling might be the wrong word because it kind of has a negative connotation sometimes, uh, but just, for your knowledge, it's it's more of a coaching or program um, where we can sit down with you and go over any of your financial needs and kind of help you, guide you in the right direction, provide you with resources uh, on a variety of financial topics. Uh, so getting into today's, or first, I'm sorry, the required financial touch points in terms of your career in the Air Force. Uh, first term airmen are all required to complete a financial readiness uh, training briefing, which occurs once a month. We have the transition assistance program. So when you're leaving or getting off active duty orders, you're required to attend that. Uh, or if you're leaving active duty, uh, you're required to attend as well. Then you have your pre and post deployment where we cover financial topics and issues, retirement, uh, if you have the birth of a child is a, a, a major life event that we can help you with, as well as marriage, divorce, promotions, etc. Today's agenda, we're going to show you a really cool, neat game uh, called Spent. We'll talk about health insurance, real estate mortgages, credit cards, debit cards, credit score and debt, budgeting investments, and then we'll leave you with some tools and resources. So I'd like you to do right now. Um, is to go on this website. It is playspent.org. And I'd like you to go through the, uh, the prompts. It's essentially a game where you're, you have a limited budget and you're required to kind of survive on that to make it through a month on a very low income salary. So you have to make some decisions, some life decisions, many financial decisions that can affect the outcome. And so it requires strategy, requires um, being financially uh, prudent and uh, fiscal as well. Uh, it's, it's not as easy as you think. So if you have a few minutes right now, or if you can't do it right now, you wanna do it later on, go on that website, go through the challenges. And then um, a good way to do is to do it initially and then go through the presentation that we're providing today and then play the game again and see if you can better, get a better score the next time around. Uh, Getting into health insurance, there's several words that you probably are familiar with. Uh, and so let's just define some of them. Premium, that's the amount you pay each month for health insurance. Copayment, that's the amount you pay each time you visit the doctor. Deductible, that's the amount you pay after seeing a provider before your insurance kicks in. Uh, Coinsurance, that's the percentage of costs you pay after you met your de deductible. So you may have a $2,000 deductible, you're gonna be paying out of pocket for um, your health care costs. And then once you hit that deductible, your insurance kicks in and then you're just going to require to pay the co-insurance, which is much lower than what you're paying straight out through to the deductible. There's basically two types of plans available, high deductible plans and low deductible plans. High deductible plan, that means you have lower monthly premiums, but a very, a much higher out-of-pocket cost when you do seek care. It's advantageous if you're in good health and you don't expect to need a lot of medical attention. So if you only go to the doctor, say once a year for a physical, you're probably better off with a high deductible plan versus someone who sees the doctor often for a uh, kind of 
sees a doctor more often or more frequently due to an underlying medical condition. In that case, you might be better off with a low deductible plan, which is a higher monthly premium, so you're paying more out of pocket each month. Um, but you're, when you do see a, a care provider, your cost is much lower. Uh, and like I said, it's advantageous if you expect to need medical care or participate in high-risk activities. <laughs> um, so interpret that as you will. Premium factors, your age, location, tobacco use, family size, and type of plan. So getting to some of the types of plans, and it gets a little confusing here, but just to break it down quite simply, HMO plan is very low cost, but requires you to choose doctors within your network. POS, it's slightly more expensive, but you can see doctors out of network. However, you probably need a primary care physician referral. EPO, only in-network care, but there's it's a much larger and greater selection than HMOs. And then you have your PMP. PPO, which is the most expensive, but you have more flexibility where you can see specialists and doctors out of network with no referral required. Plans in the uh, health insurance marketplace, the Affordable Care Act, there's essentially four different types or levels. You have the bronze, you have the silver, gold, and platinum. And you can read the chart here where bronze, you're paying higher out-of-pocket costs, but lower monthly premiums versus the platinum where you're paying lower out-of-pocket costs, but higher premiums. So the platinum, that's more of your low deductible type plan. The bronze is more of your high deductible uh, plan. Health savings account and flexible spending arrangements. These are two benefits that you have uh, depending on your insurance plan where the HSA, that's usually only for high deductible plans. It has tax advantages. So usually uh, your income, your salary, they will use pre-tax dollars uh, to fund this account. That way it lowers your uh, tax, how much tax you're paying at the end of the year when you file your tax return. Uh, and then any money left over at the end of the year continues to grow and it's available for retirement. Flexible spending arrangement, that's available with any health plan. However, the problem with this one is that any money left over at the end of the year is forfeited. So if you're paying you know, money each month, $100 each month at the end of the year, you put in $1,000, but you only use say 700 for your medical costs, then that $300 is just essentially forfeited. Real estate. Real estate market was very hot right now due to the pandemic, low interest rates, people moving out of the city. And uh, so it's a good time if you currently, if you want to sell your house, you probably get the top dollar. It's also good if you're thinking about refinancing your mortgage. But just to give you some background information about real estate. A uh, major question many people have is, should you rent or buy? It really depends on your current situation. It's unique to each individual. It really it comes down to um, determining, and it's always hard to do this, but how long you plan to live there. If you think, just to give you a rough guide, if you plan on living somewhere for less than five years, say one to three years or four years, it probably makes more sense to rent than to buy. The reason is you encounter a lot of closing costs when you purchase a home and other, other things as well. And mainly you're paying a lot of, you're not paying the mortgage off upfront, you're paying mostly the interest on that mortgage. So like I said, cost analysis, very important to do when you're determining whether it's better to rent or buy. The upfront cost of buying, that's your closing costs, your down payment, your renovations that you might have to do, uh, legal fees, et cetera. Then there's ongoing costs of buying, uh, maintenance, insurance, homeowner's fees, taxes. You have your mortgage interests and property tax deduction, which are benefits. Uh, it's, it's the same type of thing where you're lowering your property tax bill at the end of the year due to owning a home. So there's incentives for owning a home. And then you have your rental term, something you wanna consider. Is it how long is your lease agreement? Is it one year, two years? If you wanna break that lease agreement, are there any fees? And is that rate that you're paying locked in or does the landlord have or property management company have the ability to raise your rent each year? And then as we talked about uh, interest rates, it's important to understand the macroeconomic environment in terms of the real estate market, what are interest rates doing? Uh, how much will your monthly payments be based on those interest rates and the appreciation potential, the school systems, the neighborhood, things like that, your commute to work, which is something and you can see on the charts here how much it costs to commute 
to work. So depending on your location, the driving to co work costs uh, are really different, right? So this these charts are really interesting here. Uh, you have to really factor in a lot of things, not just the miles you're driving, but the depreciation on your vehicle, the gas cost, um, maintenance, other fees. Uh, oh, uh, other things, what can you afford? Now, a good rule of thumb is if you're renting, spend no more than 30% of your gross income. And if you want, if you're buying a home, spend no more than 28% of your gross income. So the monthly payment should be less than 30% of renting and 20% of buying. And you see these charts here are really interesting. You can save a lot of money uh, if you live closer to work. And if you invested that money instead of wasting it on gas in your car and expenses like that, look at how much you can put towards retirement, for example. Oh, for a 30 year career, an 11 mile commute can mean over $1 million in lost retirement savings. Mortgages. We're getting more into uh, some of the features of mortgages here, fixed and adjustable rate mortgages. The two types of mortgages your lender will provide you with fixed. That means the interest rate does not change during the life cycle of the loan. You're paying the same rate on year one as you are in year 30. Usually the interest rate is higher. There's incentives though. It offers predictability and stability. You know what you're gonna be paying for the life of the loan. You're not gonna be surprised when you you're making your monthly payment. Refinancing requires additional costs and fees. If you, uh, so if interest rates drop and you wanna refinance and get a lower rate, it's gonna cost you some upfront fees. So you have to determine if that's advantageous or not, depending on your situation. And ARM is, this, is, is an adjustable rate mortgage. That's when the interest rate can go up or down during the life of the loan, uh, depending on the economic environment. Usually the interest rate is lower than fixed uh, you don't need to refinance to take advantage of falling rates. So that's a major incentive. However, it's very unpredictable, complicated, and difficult to understand. 15-year mortgage versus 30-year mortgage. 15-year, lower interest rates. Uh, equity builds up quickly. You're paying less interest over the life of that loan. However, you're, you're uh, paying much higher monthly rates. 30-year, higher interest rates, longer to pay off because you're paying a lot of interest, especially up front. However, the rates, the, there's lower monthly rates typically. And these are just two uh, infographics, uh, $300,000 home, for example, on an adjustable rate mortgage, 3% initial rate, a five, one arm and a zero down payment. Uh, so that basically means that you're paying the same rate for five years and then the interest rate can change after that. Uh, the minimum monthly payment that you're gonna have on that loan is $1,200 and 65, 12, 1265, and the maximum monthly potential rate is 2200. So there's a big difference there depending on what interest rates are doing. And I misspoke, it's actually, and I apologize for this. The five one means uh, the maximum potential interest rate. So you take your 3% initial rate and you add 5% to that. So the maximum rate you might be paying is 8%. So at least you can predict that. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's margins, other things. It's quite complicated, but it just gives you a good rough idea that uh, you have to be careful because interest rates can change. They can go up and they can go down. So uh, there's some risk involved with adjustable rate mortgages. And that's kind of how the whole housing market crisis happened in 2006 when interest rates started going up and people got underwater because their monthly rates skyrocketed and they weren't able to pay uh, their mortgages. And then you see here on the right, the 30 year versus 15 year mortgage, 30 year interest rate is higher versus the 15 year rate. Your borrowing power is higher 30 year versus the 15 year. Your monthly payment is lower on the 30 year and higher on the 15 year. Uh, and over the course of the loan, you're gonna be paying much more for the 30 year than the 15 year. Oops, sorry, VA loan, excellent great incentive for military personnel. Now, uh, it's a mortgage loan issued by private lenders, but backed by the Department of Veteran Affairs. Who qualifies? Active duty service members or honorably discharged members within 90 days, with 90 days of active service during wartime or 181 days during peacetime. Reserve and National Guard members who've served more than six years. The spouse of a service member who died in the line of duty. 
what are the benefits? No down payment, well, that's huge. A lot of times you're gonna to have to put down 20% in order to get, to get a loan and not pay private mortgage insurance. There's an extra fee required uh, if you can't meet the minimum down payment. And there's really no minimum credit score requirement. However, uh, there's no prepayment pay penalty as well. And it's a lifetime benefit. What are the disadvantages? There's a funding fee. It's usually 1%, I think. Not always getting the lower interest rate with the VA loan. It must be a primary residence. So you must live there, I believe for at least, uh, when, no, it's not one year, two years, one or two years, I think. And I apologize for not having the exact answer here, uh, but it must be a primary residence for a certain amount of time. So you can't buy a house and then, hey, rent it out to someone or Airbnb it, you have to live there. It, um, vacant land and co-ops do not qualify. And then this is just walks you through some of the steps involved. And again, these slides are available after. So I know a lot of the type font, the typeface is small uh, for you to read real. And, and I went a little quick there. Intro to credit and debt. Credit is your ability to borrow money. Debt is the amount borrowed with credit. Principal is your loan amount, not including interest. And interest is a fee paid for borrowing money. Credit cards can be dangerous. It's easy to overspend. Uh, you have the minimum payment trap where you can make the monthly minimum payments and you're good, right? Um, you know, if you make the minimum payment payments each month, you're you won't get dinged on your credit score, but it'll take you a very long time to pay off that loan. You'll be paying a lot of interest. Uh, there's higher interest rates, um, regular purchases on regular purchases and cash advantages, uh, fees. There's annual fees, late fees, over the limit fees, balance transfer fees. Uh, so getting more into it, credit cards, they allow you to borrow money from a card issuer. Advantages, there's better protection against warranties and fraud. There's rental car coverage. There's points and rewards. Some of the disadvantages, there's late fees, monthly interest, and annual fees. It's easy to rack up debt. Low credit score affects your ability to borrow. Debit cards, withdraw money directly from your bank account. Advantages, easy to obtain. You don't accumulate debt. There's no late fees, interest charges, or annual fees. However, there are overdraft fees if you spend more than it's in your account. Disadvantages, you need to know your balance. Uh, you're less protected and they're not always accepted. Plus you don't get any rewards with debit cards. You don't get any uh, you know, airline miles with debit cards. Uh, just interesting infographics. Um, keep going here. Credit score is very important. It affects your ability to borrow. It's a statistical number uh, that evaluates your credit worthiness. It ranges from 300 to 850. It's based on credit history. That's your length of time uh, your payments, are you paying the minimum payment? Are you pulling it off? Oh, are you missing payments? Your debt, your types of credit. Lenders use it to evaluate the probability that you will satisfy your debts. Why is it important? It affects the ability to qualify for a loan. It determines the interest rate you receive. How do you improve it? You pay your bills on time. You don't carry a balance. And you don't close unused cards. Uh, so if you have a car that you don't use anymore, it's actually better to leave it open than to close it. Getting out of debt. Always pay more than the minimum payment. Try to pay off your month your bill in full. Ask for a lower interest rate. Believe it or not, they are flexible sometimes. You just have to ask. Snowball method and avalanche method are two methods of paying off debt. Um, and they, you can feel free to look them up. Consolidate debt through a home equity loan. You can balance transfer to a, a credit card with a lower APR. These are the ranges. Typically, fair is 600 to 660. Oh, I'm sorry. First, we'll start with very poor, obviously. Very poor in the 300s to 500. Poor 500 to 600. Fair 600 to 660. Um, good 661 to 780. And excellent 781 to 850. And that's just showing you how many, the percentage of people who have which score. You want to strive for 700 or higher. FICO credit score, like we said, comes down to several things. And there's the algorithms that come up with your, your credit score based on these things. Your payment history, how much you owe, your length of credit history, credit type, and how much new credit you have open. This shows you how much difference 
the difference it, it means between how much you're going to be paying over the, the life of that balance if you're only doing the minimum payment versus you're paying it off, um, you know, more each month. So for example, if you're getting, most credit cards have very high interest rates, like 15% to 18%. You only pay the minimum on 18% interest rate card. If you have a balance of $3,000 and you're not paying the minimum payment, it's gonna take you a very long time to pay off. You're gonna be charged in total 6,300 plus dollars in interest. And so what this means is that basically you're paying $9,000 for a $3,000 purchase. Now, if you only just pay $10 more per month on the same $3,000 balance, it cuts your interest in half. So you're gonna be paying a ton of money, double, 6,000 versus the products or service that you bought for 3,000. But as you see here, just paying a little extra makes a big difference. Now, $20 extra per month than the minimum. Look at that, you're paying 5,000 versus three, or versus, you know, it. Oh, I'm sorry too. If you look on the bottom, how many, how long it'll take to pay these things off. The first one will take 22 years to pay off if you're only doing the minimum. Second, if you're paying $10 extra per month, that's like a little more than say 15 years. And it'll take you eight years if you pay the minimum plus an extra $20 per month. So still very long time to pay off a $3,000 debt. And then this is the same kind of example where if you have poor credit versus good credit, you probably be getting a much uh, a better APR and it makes a huge difference on how much your loan, the amount of time your loan is for. Uh, as you see here, a 6% APR, uh, you're gonna be paying and say the car costs $15,000, $15, your monthly payment is $456 and you're gonna be paying $1,400 in interest. So you're totally you're gonna be paying over the course of the loan is $16,428. Now, if you have poor credit and they're gonna give you 10% APR, if you go with a three-year loan, your monthly payment will be 484 for that $15,000 loan amount and the total interest you'll be paying is 2,400. Now you just see here, if the loan is much longer, you know, the difference is quite considerable. Several thousand dollars difference in total interest paid a five-year loan versus a three-year loan and a, you know, a good APR of 6% versus a very poor APR of 10%. This just gets more into it and a larger purchase like a, a home, a $500 house, a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. If your credit score is good, 760 to 850, you're going to receive a very great APR of 2.591%. Your monthly payment will be about $2,000 total interest paid 220,000 versus someone who has poor credit of 600 something. I wouldn't even call that too poor, but you look at the interest rate difference. You're gonna be paying 4.175%. Monthly payment will be 2,400 and the total interest paid will be 377,000. This just shows you the importance of maintaining good credit. And then a 15 year fixed uh, monthly payments much higher, but the interest paid is lower. So overall you're paying less for the house because you're going with a 15 year loan versus a 30 year loan. Just some more infographics. Budgeting, very important. It's how you, what is it? Keep track of your income and your expenses. Understand and develop good spending habits is really important and budget is a tool that helps you do that. It helps you save money to achieve short, medium and long-term goals. How do you do it? Total your income and expenses that could be on a weekly, monthly, or yearly basis. Income from all sources, your civilian job, military, any side hustles. And then you total your expenses, your rent, your car payments, cable, groceries, gas, insurance, entertainment, et cetera. It's good to label them as fixed or variable, fixed or constant. They're the same each month. Variable change month to month. So utilities are going to change month to month, but your mortgage or car payment will be fixed. It's constant. Set your personal financial goals. Do you want to go back to school? Do you want to purchase a home? Do you want to go on vacation? Identify your goals and then develop a plan to get there. And of course, a monitor and adjust it along the way. Some useful resources to help you create a budget. Of course, first and foremost, please make an appointment with us in financial readiness at the Airman and Family Readiness Center. We'll sit down with you and walk you through how to do it. You can also use some online resources like mint.com, you need a budget.com, and pocketguard.com. Here's a sample right here, a template of what you can use. You have your 
uh, checking account balance, your savings account balance, and then your in your monthly expenditures. Your it's good to project what you're going to spend and then write in the actual amount and see the difference and then see where you need to work on. And here's a sample. Uh, I know it's a little small. I apologize for the print. But um, it just shows you some of the categories, how you, you do the same kind of thing where you're, you're budgeting, you're forecasting, and then you're going in and you're writing down the actual numbers and then seeing the difference and where can you uh, improve. Investments. There's several types of asset classes. Stocks, they represent partial ownership in a business. You receive dividends and voting rights. They're very volatile. However, greater risk means higher potential return, also higher loss potential. Bonds are generally much safer than stocks. It's loans that you make to a company or the government. So you're lending them money and in return, you're gonna receive coupon payments in the principal maturity. They're less volatile, more conservative, less risk means lower return and limited downside. However, the upside is usually not too great as well. Mutual funds are professionally managed pools of stocks. They're highly diversified. They charge annual fees called expense ratios, ratios. And then you have exchange traded funds, which are like mutual funds, but they're much more liquid. They trade like stocks, there's lower fees. Uh, however, you do have to pay some commissions. Asset allocation is simply the ratio of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, and other investment vehicles that you have in your portfolio. Factors uh, that influence whether you should invest in a stock or a bond or a mutual fund or an ETF is your time horizon, your goals, and risk tolerance rise in the machines. That's just basically saying that these days, uh, there's a lot of robo advisors where there are automated AI driven investments that optimize and rebalance your invest your your investment assets. The thrift savings plan that some of you may have, have these life cycle funds where you have a 2050 fund, for example, if you expect to retire in 2050, it's gonna automatically rebalance your portfolio. In the beginning, when you're younger, it's gonna be more aggressive, more stocks. As you age, it's gonna get more conservative and invest more in fixed income instruments. If you see here, the, the difference between 3.3% growth versus 8% growth is quite substantial. 2.3% growth over 42 years earns you $162,000. An 8% return over 42 years earns you $945,000. So that's 7% plus return due to compounding makes a huge difference. Start early. Always start early, it's never too early to start investing for retirement. The rule of 72 is a really cool thing where you can determine how long it'll take to double your money. What you do is you take 72 and you divide it by the interest rate you're, gonna, you're receiving. And that tells you how many years until your money doubles. So you take 72, say you earn 10% per year on a, your portfolio, it'll take you 7.2 years to double your money. And over the course of 45 years, that's meaning that means your money will double 6.25 times. So that just shows you how much a little goes a long way. And uh, that's why it's important to start early. Filing taxes, it's tax season. Good news, they extended it to May, uh, the month of May this year due to the pandemic. In the military, we have some great resources. TurboTax offers free tax software for enlisted military personnel. It's not valid for TurboTax Live or TurboTax CDs or downloads. All you have to do is enter your military W-2 and verify your rank to get the discount. You could take a screenshot of the link. MilTax is another free tax prep and e-filing software for military personnel. Tax consultants are available for your questions 24 seven. For more information to apply, visit militaryonesource.mil forward slash MilTax dash software. And you have the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, which is a nonprofit that offers tax services, um, free tax advice, preparation, filing, and other services. And I don't believe you need uh, military affiliation for that one. Um, asset allocation, risk versus reward. And then just leaving you with some helpful tools and links. If you don't wanna go through the struggle of determining whether you can rent or buy, there's an easy resource where you just plug in some numbers on your wallet and it'll tell you what makes more sense based on your personal situation. Health insurance, great information on healthcare.gov. You can get your free credit report at annualcreditreport.com. Uh, encourage you to do that, see where you're at. If you're in the 600 or lower range, it might make sense to evaluate what you're doing uh, so you can improve your score, obtain better interest and uh, um, 
use that to your advantage. VA loans, benefits.va.gov, budgeting resources as we discussed, investment education, investment, investopedia.com, create a simulated portfolio if you'd like. What is your financial real being? It's just a, a kind of prompt survey that tells you uh, your current situation and if you might need some to look at some things and how you can improve it. Personal finance calculators, there's a lot of them at bankrate.com. Uh, stock market game is also available to you uh, to kind of, before you put real money to work, kind of use monopoly money. Financial Literacy and Education Commission, mymoney.gov. Free finance classes are available, uh, Udemy and Coursera. And the robo-advisors are uh, two uh, well-known ones are betterment.com and wealthfront.com. If you want to think about too much, just want to have your money invested based on some goals and your uh, personal preference, visit those sites. Well, that wraps up this month's presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, again, my name is Sergeant DeRosa. I am the Financial Readiness Lead at Hairman and Family Readiness Center, available to you uh, anytime. Please email me. Let's, let's sit down and, and talk about things. Or uh, We also have a personal financial counselor available who is an accredited individual who, who has uh, more authority to kind of, um, and, and resources as well and experience to help you as well. So essentially I work with him very closely and together we can uh, address any of your financial needs. And of course, all of this is very kept completely confidential. So don't worry about you know anything, it's strictly confidential. Slides are available on Google Drive. Um, please join the Wellness 52 group me to stay abreast of topics uh, we're discussing and things like that. And then of course, visit us, uh, Ironman and Family Rance Centers, but building 3435 is on the left side of the road before the traffic circle by the BX. As I mentioned, April is Financial Awareness Month. We have a lot of free materials available to you and um, it's a good time to just sit down and kind of address your current financial situation. Uh, if you're single, uh, if you're married, uh, sit down with your partner and uh, kind of look things over and see maybe there's some areas you can improve. And uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, thank you for joining us this month and hope to see you again next time. Take care, everyone.